Hello, this is Jimmy Steller, and I have a special guest here today, and you may know him as the man in the white hat. Hey there, my superficial friends of the internet. How, how are we doing? All right, so, well, we just saw Scarface for the first time. I know, I know, it's a one classic. of the great... Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, at least now it's... It's fresh in our memories, even. Yeah. So, we're just going to give our individual opinions of it, and then we're going to just go through the movie, I guess. So... In my opinion, I'd have to say it ranks up there with Once Upon a Time in America, Goodfellas, The Untouchables, and The Godfather as one of the top top gangster movies of our time. Al Pacino gives one of his greatest performances ever. Um, the cast was pretty good. Uh, I thought the I actually thought the length. I think it helped build up the tension in the movie. It helped develop the characters more. And I really liked the soundtrack. Um, yeah, so overall, very impressed. Uh, anyway, here's uh, Nate's opinion. Uh, well, uh, the only movie of the ones that you just listed that I've seen was The Unt Untouchables. And I wouldn't rank it up there as that high. That was a phenomenally good movie. This one, uh, you know, I gotta say, I know you say the it was good how long it was, but I think the length worked against it. But that's just kind of me. I, I don't have that big of an attention span. I thought it had a really tense o opening little bit, and then the climax at the end was freaking awesome, but it dragged a lot in the middle, up until the time where he uh, kills his boss guy there, Frank. Yeah, okay. Uh, kind of yeah. before, before then, it was just... Uh. Yeah, I remember you uh, saying at one point in the during the movie, you were just like, oh, it's starting to drag. Yeah. At the part where he visits the girl at the pool. I, I thought it was all right. But going back on that one earlier comment you made just now about the Untouchables, I, I don't get it. What exactly did you mean? You mean that you wouldn't rank the Untouchables as high oh, as no, Scarface? No. Or? I, I think the Untouchables is a really good movie, and that Scarface doesn't quite really add up to Untouchables. Really? Well, actually, you know what? I thought the Untouchables was... I thought it was an inferior film to Scarface, really. Really, eh? Well, yeah, it, it's well. They're both directed by Brian De Palma, who is a fantastic director. I thought this one was done by Oliver Stone. No, no, Oliver Stone wrote it. Ah, okay. My, my and mistake. I gotta say, it really felt like an Oliver Stone movie. I mean, this was made uh, a while before he actually became a famous director, but you could just tell that he was. He was just. You could just see these elements in the dialogue, and also this. What I really noticed is when. Um, it's one of the best parts of the movie. You yourself, you mentioned that you loved it, where Al Pacino's character, Tony Montana, he gets up and he starts railing against all the finely dressed people in the restaurant. Just, yeah, yeah exactly. Just that looking at him. Awesome. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, you go, you need people like me to point your fingers at. You need I'm a bad guy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, you could tell that authority, um, that hatred towards authority, oh. and also like, the hypocrites and I, I thought I thought the fall was a lot more interesting than their eyes. I to suppose. be honest, though, um, I just wanted to say. Well, I researched it a little bit, and I actually read that Martin Scorsese turned to uh, Brian De Palma and Al Pacino, and he said, "This is a great movie and all, but Hollywood will hate it because it's about them." <laughs> yeah, he they he actually said that. And what surprised me most of all, though, was that this ties into your lagging time thing. Dustin Hoffman fell asleep watching it. See, you know what? And I could see how that could happen. The music in it. I don't know if it was originally written for the film or if No, was, I don't think so. I think there was some... Whatever it was, it was really generically 80s, and that was awesome. Yeah, yeah, it did sit, set the mode, yeah. Actually, it reminded me a lot of Carlito's Way, which De Palma would later direct. It, they, he does the same thing where he sets it in this disco dance thing, and you've got Pacino, a bearded Pacino with a Puerto oh, Rican right. accent, just walking around. Oh, yeah, I, you know, I think you told me about that movie. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, so speaking of supporting characters, though, I really liked um, oh, what's it, Stephen Bauer, his um, best friend, I think. That guy, yeah, I really liked that guy. I yeah, thought I, he was of the, all the characters in the movie, he was the one that I could the most uh, like relate to, or really <laughs> kind of like look at and go, wow, he's like a human being, he's a character, not just kind of a yeah. unrelatable person. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought that he was pretty good. Uh, the sister was a little weird. The sister was Especially weird. Especially at the end. 
she was messed right up. Well, you, that's probably the, just because of the cocaine and all, oh, and the fact that he just shot her husband. That's true. What I really liked about it, though, was um, Al Pacino's performance. I thought that was the best part of the movie. It was a it was a good performance for what it was supposed to be. I I agree. Yeah, except he didn't really have a character. It, yeah, except uh, that actually to quote in the in the beginning, it was like he yeah. started off as a character with personality and then no. degraded. Actually, throughout to, the course of the movie. Actually, I read a Roger I read Roger Ebert's review of it, and this summed it up really perfectly. I think the way he talked about it, he says basically like I'm not quoting him word for word, of course, but um, Roger Ebert said um, we open up with. Al Pacino's character, Tony Montana, bluffing his way through interrogation office, and that's basically what he does for the rest of the movie, bluff. And, man, that's so true. He just, yeah. it's just, there's no character behind it. He's just so single-minded, it's ridiculous. But, and um, even when he got the women, he wasn't really that enthusiastic about it. No, that's, that's also something really interesting, eh? When you get it, you don't enjoy it. Yeah. Sometimes where, like, when they're in the restaurant, he's just looking at the food... The restaurant was, I guess, my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, my due to like the whole thing with for, his wife okay, and whatnot. I, I, had, I had two di- fav- different favorite parts of the movie: the uh, the restaurant scene and the awesome action. Oh yeah, hands down, yeah. But for for different reasons. As long as you just sit through the the character yeah, development and you the sit part. through uh, the middle part, wasn't that bad. I mean, uh, you've seen okay. What about American Gangster? Because you've mentioned that before we watched. Oh uh, yeah, movie. well, because American. Gangster I haven't was- seen the movie myself, but. Is a, it was far too long. Good movie, but far too... It kind of, the, kind of the same sort of movie as this. It was a good movie, but there was just so much that they could have taken out, and it was, still would have been really well done. Uh-huh. Um, that's just my opinion.